God is on the throne, and prayer changes things. Lord, we just praise you. We give you glory. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the writing of the prophets, O oh God, who saw things that humans never saw, O oh God, and experienced things, O oh God, that they wrote in the scriptures to reveal to your people, O oh God, in these last days, to get us excited, O oh God, about a journey to heaven, as well as, O oh God, you returning to the earth. Now, anoint your servant, O oh God, that the eyes of the understanding of your people may be enlightened and that their hearts may be open to receive that which the prophet spoke of. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans chapter 8, and we're going to be reading from verse 19 to verse 22. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Last week I talked about the animal kingdom and how it's been moaning and groaning, waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Today, I, I want to talk to, about another portion of creation that is waiting for the return of our Savior. And unbeknown to most people, when God placed Adam in the garden, everything in the garden was alive. The stones were alive. The trees were alive. The mountains and the hills were alive. Everything was alive. The birds, the bees, the flowers, and the trees, everything that God made, everything that had breath, everything that had life, spoke that you and I, if we lived in those days, would understand their speech. So the prophets, they, they have experiences that God takes them places like heaven or other places, where, even on the earth, to see things and, and, and to witness things and to touch things and to be themselves, and they wrote about things, both past, the present when they were living, and the future. So I want to show you and take you back in time to be able to, to help you understand the future, because what we see today, as it says, the creation will be set free from the slavery of not being able to speak to the sons of God. So let's look in the word of God to see exactly what it's going to look like when Jesus returned to the earth. Isaiah 55, verse 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. So here, this is the chapter where the Lord says, if anyone thirsts, if anyone hunger, you know, Paul wrote in the writing to the Corinthians in, in first, the first writing to the Corinthians in chapter two, he talks about how eye has not seen and how ear has not heard or the heart of man, because we live in a world under a curse, cannot understand the world they used to be. So they don't have any confidence in believing in the world to come. And so he says, you can come and get wine and milk and buy from me freely here. And so he goes on. And, and, and then when he gets down to the verse, let's read the verse again. Verse 12 again. For you shall go out with joy. And be so he, out. he's talking about when he comes back, that he's going to put the earth back in this form of the Garden of Eden. And he says, you're going to go out. And when you go out, guess what's going to happen? Continue. And be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into All singing. All of a sudden, the mountains and the hills, you know, they're going to what? They're going to break forth in what? In singing. The mountains and the hills are going back to their old glory. 
all creation moans and groans waiting for the sons of God coming back. So when Jesus returned with the bride of Christ, with, his, with the chuns and the children of God, the hills see them. And all of a sudden, their mouth opened. And they say, hallelujah. <laughs> they begin to sing and praise God. Why? They've been bound for a couple of thousands of years. And now their tongue is loose. I mean, could you imagine that? You know, David wrote something about this in Psalms 148, verse 9 and 10. Yeah, look what David was saying in Psalms 148. Because remember, the prophets and those that walk with God and talk with God, some of them, God showed them the past and then also take them to the future. And so when they come back, they wrote it. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Psalms 148, verses 9 and 10. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl. Kings, and, go ahead, continue. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. So he starts off with verse 1. He says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Then he goes but higher than the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Because remember, Solomon says the heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain the glory of God. How much more this temple I build, but let it be a place where we pray to the one we cannot see. And so David, when he prays that, he says, in verse 2, praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him in the highest heavens. Praise the waters above the heavens, because most people don't know that there's oceans way above our heavens. When he separated the oceans from above from the oceans beneath, no one has, well, not no one, the prophets, they know the oceans up there. Why? Because God translates them and they get to see it. So he said, praise them from the oceans above the clouds. Then he says, and, and let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. And, and then he says, it goes on. Then verse 7, praise the Lord from the earth. All you sea monsters, the ones we haven't seen yet. <laughs> all you sea monsters and all you deeps. And then he tells the fire and the hell and the snow. and the, He tells these entities that they shall praise the Lord. Not snow that falls in the flakes. Not the hell, but hell itself where hell come from. Snow itself where snow come from. He sees them and he says, snow, praise him. Hell, praise him. He sees these entities and he tells them, praise him who made you. Then he says, the fruit trees and all cedars, the mountains, verse 9. And then he says, hell, hell, snow, clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. I'm going to go into all of this today if the Lord permits me. So that you can see that all creation is moaning and groaning, waiting for us to come. Look, look so these mountains and these trees, let's look at them for a while. Look in Psalm 65, verse 12. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. Even the hills, not only do the mountains sing, the little hills, their voice is not as strong as the mountain. They have a little mouth. So, you, you know, so it's, 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 it's almost like the, the mountains is going to be your bass, and then you're going to have your tenors and your sopranos and, uh, and the altos. And all, unbeknown to you, they all have their own voice. And so even the hills... They're going to be singing. The little hills are going to be singing. And it's going to be a beautiful sound, you know. Like you, you ever seen a choir with the young kids in it, you know, and they got a voice that they grow out of that it, when they, get, when they get, get older, they can't hit it. You know, when I was younger, I could hit a very, I, I mean, I had a beautiful voice, believe me in that. You'll never know it now. But when I was young, and I showed off because I knew I could sing, and then all of a sudden I grew up, and that was it for the voice. But I made children that all my children sing. They all came out of me. 
So these hills were seen. And, 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 and look at, um, you know, another thing we, we look at Isaiah 55, verse 12, back there again. And, and I, want to, I, want to, I want to bring reference to not, not just the mountains and the hills, but there's something else going on there. Isaiah 55, verse 12 again. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And so wh why the hills and the mountains are singing, the trees are clapping. See, 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 you see, see, y'all think this is not real. But the Lord is trying to tell you something. You never saw it. You never saw it in heaven and you never was there in the garden. He says, when I return, the mountains were singing. And the, and the trees going to be in beat. It's going to be rhythm. And remember, then trees are different size. And the limbs and leaves are different. So when they clap, it's going to be like a tamarind. But it's going to be the sign. It's going to be the town of the leaves and the branches. I mean, it's going to be awesome. The trees of the field will clap. Notice it says their hands. Look in First Chronicles 16, verse 33. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for See, he is coming. See, even the prophets there, notice, notice multiple prophets tell us the same thing about the trees in the fields. They, they know something that the people listening to them do not know. They know that everything is alive, but it's under bondage, waiting for the revealing of the children of God. Go ahead again, read it again. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord. Notice that they, only, they not only clap, they rejoice. <laughs> ah, they not only can clap, guess what trees can do? They can sing. And so the trees in the garden, unbeknown to you in Genesis chapter 2, all of them sang. All of them could clap. Remember when man fell? He hid himself among the trees. <laughs> Remember what he sowed upon himself? Leaves. <laughs> ah, what, what made him imitate the trees? They were living entities. So he said, I would disguise myself as a tree. <laughs> and so he borrowed some of their leaves and he said, God, and so when the Lord God, the Lord God came looking for him, he didn't see him. Why? He was hidden like a tree. <laughs> and the Lord said, where are you? And finally, he finally moved. And he spoke just like the trees. Jesus healed a man one time, and he said, what do you see? He said, I see men walking like trees, because trees and men walk. Oh, my God, this is fun, isn't it? Look in Psalm 65, verse 13. I want to just show you the things that are under bondage that's going to be released when God and the bride return. Psalm 65, verse 13. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. So you have singing valleys, singing pastures. So when David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lie. You know what he said? He making me to lie down in singing pastures. <laughs> pastures of green. They sing. And he leads me to the still waters because the waters sing too. I'm going to get to those verses. <laughs> and so everything right now, you can't see the truth of who and what they are. So look at the, let's look at some of the trees. Isaiah 14. Verse 8, you're going to love this. Indeed, the cypress trees rejoice over you, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. So when the Lord returned, they say to the Lord, That's no more axe that's going to cut us down. <laughs> 
See, they said, we're going to rejoice. Why? When the Lord returned, no one else will ever cut us down again. Why? We can talk. Hey, what you, don't touch me. <laughs> what you doing with that axe? <laughs> Woo. You know, I had, I cut about a 200 trees down on my property. And for a long time, whenever I walked down there, I could feel deaf because I could hear them when they were being cut. And it was painful for me. I, I actually, before I cut them down, I went to talk to all of them. And I tell them, y'all got to go. Y'all got to go. I have to, a lot of them were falling already. And they were costing me a lot of money. And so I was taking them down, you know. And um, boy, I don't want to cry. It was sad. But I had to take them down because I knew they were alive. So I had to comfort them and, and tell them in advance, I mean no harm. And, and, and so uh, it was personal with me and my trees. And so uh, God helps me. You know, uh, I, I hope, you know, when I get there, they would, they'd be still singing. <laughs> so the fir trees rejoice. Notice that verse. Let's say that verse again. The fir, the fir trees do what? Indeed, the cypress trees rejoice over you. And the, the ciders, they go ahead. And the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. And so they praise God because when the sons of God come, they know that they're not going to let man use an axe on them again. They rejoice because then they can say, I'm a living entity. Don't, and they can take their limb there and push you out of their way with you, when you come in the axe. <laughs> oh my God! You know, you know. Let's look at some of these trees. What they did in scriptures, because people did it. You read it, but you never saw it. Look in um, Second Samuel, chapter eighteen, starting with verse six to verse eight, and then we'll do nine. So I wanted to show you what the trees got, what trees are able to do when they work for people who know they exist. So the people went out into the field of battle against Israel. And so Absalom and his, and his warriors are fighting against David and his warriors. And you know that God is going to fight for David. And so because God is going to fight for him, and nature know that, watch what nature do. Go ahead. And the battle was in the woods of Ephraim. So where was the battle? Up in the woods with the trees. But they didn't know the trees are warriors. Watch the warriors. Go ahead. The people of Israel were overthrown there before the servants of David, and a great slaughter of 20,000 took place there that day. So 20,000 people died in that forest that day. But watch this. For the battle there was scattered over the face of the whole countryside, and the woods devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. That day the trees killed more people than the warriors. And watch what they did with the king that led in the resistance. Then Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode on a mule. The mule went under the thick boughs of a great terebinth tree. So it, what kind of tree? A terebinth. Remember in the scriptures I taught you, every time you see the word terebinth, that's a chief angel of the forest. He's over all the trees of the forest, so he's known as the terebinth tree. That word terebinth is, means it's an entity, an angel. And what did the angel do with his arms and hand when Absalom came? Go ahead. Then his head caught in the terebinth, so he was left hanging between heaven so and earth. He reached his limb down and grabbed him up so he couldn't get away. And do you know what Job, his uncle, did? He killed his, his nephew. And so remember, Joab is David's cousin. He's over the command of the host. So this, this family, remember, Absalom is fighting his father. He's going to kill his father. But the trees said, no, you're not today. So more people were killed by the forest than by the sword. And as you can see, these entities are alive. I know you read that story. You might not have saw that the trees kill more men than men killing men. You know, in that movie, um, um, which one was the what? The Lord of the Rings, the trees come to the battle. Y'all thought that was just the movie? Now you found it in the Bible. 
when the trees help mankind, in this case, King David. Also, let's look at some other things that while we're here, we might as well, you know, I might as well, you know, how about um, um, Exodus 15? No, no, no. I'm going to hold off on that. And so let's go to Isaiah 35 verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 35, 1 and 2. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them. And so when the Lord come back with the bride of Christ, the wilderness and the wasteland, the deserts, where it looks like nothing is going on and they all did. Watch what happened. Go ahead. What would they do? And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the ah! rose. The desert just going to wake up. Flowers are going to just start popping up out of it. It's, it's, it's almost like it, it opened up a coat that you didn't know it had. And all you see is trees and flowers on her. You know, she's like, boom. <laughs> And all of a sudden, the wilderness and the desert will start singing and come. So you got the mountains, you got the hills, you got the trees, and then you got the wilderness and the desert doing what? Shouting with joy. See, all creation moaning and groaning and say, can y'all get your act together, saints? Can't y'all do something right? And anytime a tree can grab you. Or oh, it can drop its limb. It sees you coming down the road. It times it. And a limb falls off and crush your car. You call that an accident. That's not an accident. That's a tree that they have decided to judge you that day. Or you come around the bend. And you think your car is losing control. And you go into the tree. And it kills you. Why? Because they have judged you. Oh, my God. The desert rejoice. Look in Psalms, uh, no, First Chronicles, uh, we did 16 verse 32. We did First Chronicles 16, 31. No, no, I haven't did that yet. But let's do 31 and 32 since... Uh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't really want to use 31, but I want to read it now so I, I can reference it later on. But 32 is what I'm interested in. But go ahead and read verse 31 and 32. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. See, when, when Jesus comes back, the heaven is going to speak for itself. And the earth is going to talk. And the sea is going to jump and say something. And so when mankind see that, all of the earth is going to see, and the knowledge of God will be like the waters that cover the sea. So when mankind see that all creation praise the Lord of hosts, and go here with the next verse. Let the sea roar. and The all sea its will roar. roar. <laughs> it's going to actually lift itself up. Could you imagine how tall the ocean is? When it stands up and it's not laying down flat. Go ahead. And all its fullness. Let the field rejoice and all that is in it. So all the field, the sea, the mountains, the pastures, the wilderness, the desert. All creation is moaning and groaning, waiting for you and I. Continue. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord. And so he's telling, so you got, you got the earth, you got, you got the heavens, you got the sea, you got, you got, you got the, I mean, it, go ahead, go ahead. I mean. For he is coming to judge the earth. And so when he's coming back to judge the earth, to set everything in order, all creation say, you finally got back. They've been waiting for thousands of years. They've been waiting. How long, oh Lord, holy and true before you get these people off of us. You know, people making love in the field, and don't the field sitting there watching, get off of me. <laughs> you know, it, it knows you're committing adultery. It knows you, the trees in the forest when you make love in the forest. Do you know the trees are watching you fornicate? Yeah. I don't want to spoil my message, though. I just, you know, people don't know they're watching, but, I, you know, I, I don't want to spoil it. And so, and so look in Psalms 98, verse 7. Verse 7 and 8. Let the sea roar and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. 
Let the rivers clap their hands. And so not only do the oceans clap and the trees clap, guess what the rivers are going to do, y'all? Even the rivers is going to clap their hands. Continue. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. With righteousness he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. And so the writer of Proverbs chapter 30, I always because the name of this writer is never given to us. Look in Proverbs 30, verse 4. But the writer asked this question for, the, for his readers in the book of Proverbs. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If Someone you know. who wrote this knew the father and the son. And he said, tell me who it is. And I know that you've been somewhere. That's what I tell people. Uh, I'm going to start telling some of my, my personal stories in a little while, but I want to get the verses. Up. I want to let the prophets talk before I talk. Okay? Isaiah 42, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk on it. So God, I, go ahead. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I the will, Lord said, I'm calling for my children. I want you to begin to see what the sinner cannot see, that all creation is waiting, moaning and groaning. It doesn't want us to be like the rest of them. It wants to separate Absalom from David. The trees want to destroy Absalom and give you shade and give you the best of his fruit. I mean, you know, I planted about 20 some fruit trees on my property. And I remember the first year when one of the trees, the peaches came, I got more peaches from one tree alone for the peaches. You know, I said to myself, well, I'm gonna have to cut down the other ones because I'm not gonna, I got two. I have too much fruit. <laughs> it, it, it gave me of his strength. This year, I got pears for the first time. I, and, you know, my wife, she got berries, and we got cucumbers. And people say, well, I planted a garden, too. I know, but yours ain't as sweet as mine. <laughs> and your vitamins probably don't have the same vitamins that I get in their mind because they, they, they know, I, they know that, that's the son of God. I mean, that's the son of God. So they give me of their strength. Oh, boy, I'm going to get some people saying, I got good stuff, too. Well, you probably do. <laughs> and so, and so I, wanted, I wanted to then look at um, uh, 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 how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go uh, look in Psalms 89, verse 12. And so I want you to see creation in a way uh, that the prophets wrote of. And then when I start sharing some of my testimonies, the way I see it. I mean, because those that are listening to me, you're listening to someone who have seen things that the eye has not seen and who have heard things that ear has not heard, who have been somewhere where people have not been other than the prophets and those that God has chosen. So let's take a, a deeper journey in creation now. Go ahead. The north and the south, you have created them. And so God created the north, their entities. We call them on the earth, the North Pole and the South Pole. Now, unbeknown to you, the North Pole ha has a name and, um, and the South Pole. And one day I was uh, right here where I was taping right, but I was up in my office up, up in, in upstairs and, 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 and one of them walked into my, my office there and he started talking to me. He said to me, you don't know me. And I said, uh, I looked at it. Because it's an entity. And I said, no, I don't know you. And he says, I'm north. And my sister is south. And he said, and so he began to unravel the mystery of who he is. And unbeknown to most people, how many of you ever have a battery in your car? You have a positive and you have a negative. And he told me. He gives, him and his sister gives power to the earth. 
And I then feel, then that's when I realized how Tess Telsta figured out how to get free electricity. So I went and I worked on it. And now I will continue with my message. Continue to read. Mm -hmm. The Boar and Herman rejoice in your name. And so now notice that these, unbeknown to you, are mountains. But you didn't know that these are real entities. So Mount Tabor and Mount Hermon are living entities. So he says the north is alive, the south is alive, and the mountains. Remember the mountains? See, see, y'all even looked at me a little strange when I say that these mountains were entities. But how, how can a mountain clap his hand and sing if it's not an entity, y'all? And what you don't know that the mountains have names. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north? And so the Himalayas, mountains, every mountain has a name. And unbeknown to you, that mountain is real. And so he says, read that verse again so people can see that the prophets, they knew this. Go ahead. The north and the south, you have created them. The boar and Hermon rejoice in your name. They rejoice. They are waiting one day so they can skip. And, they can, and he will call. He tell me, tell, he'll call them by the name. He'll call all the mountains by the name. He'll call every hill by his name. He would call every river by its name. He would call all the oceans because all the o the Pacific is not the Atlantic. The Atlantic is not the Indian Ocean. He will call them by their name because by him they were and are created. He created all of them. And the day he created them, they were singing, they were shouting, they were all. And then man fell. And all of a sudden there was just silence. Job 26, verse 7, this is just a little piece of, you know, a little nugget of gold for, I'm not going to stop digress, but I, I had to put this in since I knew I was going to be taping, but let me put it in and go on with my message. He stretches out the north over empty space. And so the north pole has no stars directly over it. See, the north he stretched that over empty space, whereas the South, that's a different story. But I digress. Man, back to my message. Uh, he, he laid the foundation. Do I want that verse? Psalms 93, verse 1. Psalm 93, verse 1. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. So the, he established the earth so it would not move until he moved it. In other words, when they see him, they sing, they shout. In other words, he interacts praise and worship from all creation by his appearance. <laughs> And because and so Adam, who had a portion of the glory of God, being his son, would walk around in trees. Was a they were they they would sing for Adam and Eve. Why? Because they were the children of God. And so all creation is waiting to sing, y'all. They want to sing for us. They want to sing for you. You know, I, I, the job I used to work that I retired from. I would go back in the woods with my. I had a twelve string guitar, and I would go back there. And I would start singing and playing. And all of a sudden, I could feel the trees. I could, all of a sudden, birds would come and chirp that went along with my praise and worship with God. And all of a sudden, people would start coming and say, can I sit? Or they would, they could sit their lunch and sit by me. And, and people would start. And so they, 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 they saw what time I would come up there. And regularly, people would say, OK, he got his guitar. Well, and I just praised the Lord and sang the Lord, me and nature, and the peace that surpasses all understanding. If a person was sick that day and they came, they got healed. Is a person was going through on the job that day and they came and when they went back to work, they that rest of that afternoon was nothing but the peace of God. So they look forward to medicine that came from nature and from me because nature would join in when you sing and you worship the Lord. Oh my God, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a little sidetracked. So let's go to Job 38, 28. This is where you put your seatbelt on. 
So you put your seatbelt on if, if you didn't have it on, and we, wee! This is when you're on a roller coaster, and it, it's, it's, going, it's getting ready to take that dive. So we've been going to chugga, 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 chugga up. And now all of a sudden, we're going to take a dive. Job 38, verse 28. As the rain a father? So the rain has a father. And hold on. Not just the rain has a father. Go ahead. Or who has begotten the drops of dew? Who is the mother of dew? And so rain wants to praise God when he comes back. In other words, the rain is like living rain. The dew is like living dew. Y'all, 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 missing, me. y'all missing something here. So watch this. Continue. From whose womb comes the ice? And the frost of heaven. And, and did you know that the mother of snow and, and ice? So I was riding home one day, and I was on the phone with a friend of mine, and I, we were talking, you know, and all of a sudden the Lord got in my car with me. And he, had, he brought a visitor. See, every end of the thing, the Lord wants me to meet new entities. And so the Lord looked at me and he, he, with his smile, and he looked, and looked at the woman that he brought this woman with him. And the Lord said to me, out of whom womb came the snow? And, and I, I told the Lord, I don't know. And he looked at her and, then, and he let me know that was the mother of snow. And then the Lord left the two of us as we communicated, her and I. And boy, when I got home, <laughs> I found out about her other children, who's her cousins. Oh, why? Because I met her in whom snow come out of. I met the mother of snow. And so, oh, that was one awesome week, y'all. Moving right along. And so, so we got the mother of frost, the mother of snow, the father of rain, the mother of dew. Look, <laughs> look, at, look, look at Job 38, 22, 23. Why? Not only do these entities exist, the, the Lord told us he built homes for them. Let's read this. Have you entered the treasury of snow? The Lord said, have you ever been in the home of snow? Go ahead. Or have you seen the treasury of hail? Or have you ever visited her home? Go ahead. Which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. And so every now and then the Lord will call them out of their chamber. When he calls snow out of his chamber, that's a lot of snow. He said he reserved snow for major battles. Every World War the battle was decided by a snowstorm. The Revolutionary War, a snowstorm. Napoleon, a snowstorm. Hannibal, a snowstorm. All major wars that we know regarding mankind, he said he reserved the snow for that war. And then he told her to come out of her chamber, and she obeyed. Moving right along, I met her too, by the way. <laughs> Remember, I met, I met her, but I also met her daughters and her sons. Moving right along. Woo! Okay, so where are we at? we in verse what? 23? Okay, now I want to do Job 38, 19, and 20. I want to show you some more of these entities that are waiting to shout and, and praise the Lord. Where is the way to the dwelling of light? The Lord said, where is the sidewalk to take you to Light's house? Have you been on the path for the sidewalk? Because most people, when you, all of my homes have, you know, a, a path or a road that you get to them. So the Lord asked Job, do you know how to get to the house of light? And then watch this, it gets better. And darkness, where is its place? And he said, and tell me the address of where darkness live. Well, actually, they live across the street from each other. <laughs> How do I know? Ah, see, that's the beauty. There are prophets that's been like myself. They saw these things, so they wrote about it. Me, I'm talking about it. So the Lord asked Job, do you know how to get to the house where light dwell? And do you know where, where, where darkness, where it dwells? Well, I know they cross the street from each other. And I, and I know it separates the two of them. I know the name of the street that separates the two. So that way I, I know how to get to their house. You know, they have addresses. And, and the Lord says that. Oh, I'm having fun. <laughs> so 
So when you have these things, uh, and, and look also in Job 38, verse 8. Or who shut in the sea with doors? And so it- the sea has a door in this house. And it has, how many have a front door? And how many of y'all have a back, a, a back door? Well, I got cu- a couple of doors because my house is pretty large. So I have a side door, a back door, a front door, screen door, you know, <laughs> a carport door. And, you know, some of these people, they get, they get to their car through the, uh, through the garage, but the, the, the door is between the house. They let them in the garage. So they go in the garage and they go through the door. So houses have different doors. The sea has doors. And out of it, it lets things come. That's why when the sea comes ac- to the shore, that's because it's open its doors. <laughs> why? But I, 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 wait a moment. The sea, because the Lord put a fence around the sea. Uh, did you hear me, y'all? What did I just say? Proverbs 8, 29. Let's look at the fence that he puts around the ocean. What is it called? What is it made of? When he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters would not transgress his command, he marked out the foundations of the earth. And And so the Lord had made the sand, the fence, or the ocean. And he says, this is your boundary. So he said to her, because that's also a she, and he said to her, I'm putting the fence, and I don't want you to go past it unless I tell you to open your doors. And so when he comes back, he tells the sea, open all your doors and just stand up and clap. And so when it stands up, you will see the fish in it. And you'll be, you'll be like going to an aquarium and you're looking through glass, like they did when they went through the Red Sea and they saw fishes and everything else. They were walking through an aquarium and they were on both sides. They could see everything in the sea. Yet it did not bother them because that day the sea stood up. <laughs> Woo! The, so the sea has a fence. It, 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 it has its job. It, it, you know, Proverbs 8.29. When, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. And so... What And so let me talk a little bit now about what separate light and darkness. Job 26, verse 10. He drew a circular horizon on the face of the waters. And so on the face of the waters is a circle. And unbeknown to you, the circle is surrounded with ice. The Bible says he, fo- he froze the face of the deep with his breath. So after the flood, the Lord was taking and putting the waters back in his house because it said he opened up the storehouses of the death. So he told water, come out of your house. And then he told the water to come out of his house in the heaven. So there were storehouses in, up in heaven. There were storehouses on the side and there were storehouses in the under. I mean, under the, 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 the sea and under the earth. And so if you read Genesis 6 to 9 in chapter 6 and 7, when it describes the flood of Noah, most people refuse, or not refuse, they don't see the verses where it says the water came from the side, it came underneath, and it came above. So he opened up the storehouses of all these different locations, and he says, come out. And the water, and that's what's the flood. The flood was not rain falling for 40 days, 40 nights. Because the waters underneath, it took 150 days for it to gush up. So, oh, the water was just coming up like a fire hydrant. Moving right along. And, and continue. He drew a circular horizon on the face of the waters at the boundary of light and darkness. And so if you ever go out in the ocean, that's where God separates light and day. That no one can see the sun really disappear in the ocean. In other words, if you was to follow it, you can't. And when it rises, it just rises. And this is what the psalmist says, the sun is like a bridegroom who coming out of his chamber. Every morning, the sun rises because it comes out of his chamber. Where do it come? Right across the ocean, 
out of the horizon where God separates night from day, light and darkness. Take a cruise one day, go on the ocean and watch the sunset. In other words, watch it disappear over the horizon. But the horizon is not a ball going down because there's no such thing. It goes in this chamber and then there's darkness. And then next thing you know, you look, you'll see it coming out of his chamber. It's like a strong man to run his race. And every day it enter ends and come out. I don't want to get into argument with people who believe the scientists. Just go into the ocean. Don't take my word for it. It's observable. Is demonstrable and it's repeatable every day. Woo! Now, Psalms 33, verse 7. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. And so these, these different waters and stuff are in homes. So unbeknown to you, they're homes to the side of us, homes underneath us, and in the ocean and under the ground, and there's homes as well above us. So he gathered these things for whatever he's ready to open them for over his purpose. All right? Now, Psalms 135, verse 7. So God has homes for all the things. He has homes for light and darkness. He has homes for the snow and the hail. He has homes for the winds and the rains. Everything has a house. Continue. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasury. And so he causes the vapor to go back into the house. So the vapor ascends and goes back into, and unbeknown, there's homes waiting for the vapor. And then these homes float over top of us and drop their water. <laughs> and guess what? The water goes down and then it goes back home. <laughs> You, and unbeknown, you just, the scientists don't know what's going on. They just saying, well, you know, that's the vapor, and it's going up, and the cloud is full. They don't know their homes. And so, unbeknown to them, look what God says, John 3, verse 8. No, 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 Ecclesiastes 1, verse 6 and 7, before we go, John, before we go to see what Jesus say. Okay. The wind goes toward the south. So he says, the wind goes to the south. In other words, it's it's coming out of his house. You don't know it's coming out of his house. I did a big thing like that on Puerto Rico because they didn't know. You know, I got, I got another psalm that I'm waiting to. There's, he's chained in the chamber right now waiting for me to release him. And it would be bigger than any Category 5 you ever known. What is he waiting for? He's waiting for my word. Continue. And turns around to the north. And so this guy, he comes and he's turning around. He got his outfit on and he's showing off, right? And then he goes towards the north. They call that hurricane season. Watch what he does. Go ahead. The wind whirls about continually and comes again well, on its circuit. Turning around, it's continued. You see the hurricane, like a huge tornado, but this is a hurricane, and it's turning around continuously, and guess what it does? And comes again on its circuit. All the rivers because run. Because you didn't know that it, it must follow its path. So guess what they try to do? Predict its path. They have gotten so good, they say, we, we, we know it's going between here and here. They realize that the wind has a path, and God has determined the path of the wind. So he has his way in the whirlwind. He, in other words, the whirlwind can't go off course. It already knows exactly where it's been told to go. Continue. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. And so everything goes in, and then it vaporizes, go back up, go back into his chamber, waiting to fall again, and, 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 and look in John 3, verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes. And so Jesus said, you know, the wind blows where, where it wants to go, right? Now watch what he says. And you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. You have nowhere, no, have no idea where it's coming. You know, every, almost every year when fall, when she comes to town, she stops at my house. And she always ride on a wind coming from the south. And when she comes, it's always a warm wind. 
So every time fall comes, it comes in the, because it's coming from the south, it's a warm wind. And that day you can feel the warm wind, but you don't know that fall. And she goes in her chamber. And of course, a summer is in that chamber. And so the two of them, I always tell people like they're having coffee. They, they don't drink coffee, but they converse with each other for a while. And then summer leaves and fall stay there waiting for a winter to return. And they all come in this circuit on their time. Now, I met three of them. I met, I met summer, I met, I met spring, and I met um, um, fall. And, but I haven't met winter yet. And I, I know it's coming because my, my, you know, and when spring came, I met spring last year for the first time. And I've been knowing fall for years. But spring came in and she said to me, do you know who? I said that to her. I saw her standing there and I said, I don't know you. And she said, my name is spring. And I said, I still don't know you. Why did I say that? She decided to give me a demo. She knocked down a whole group of my trees and right by my window. She just, woo! She said, I bet you know me now. <laughs> and I said, did you have to do that? But they do that. I got fall upset one day talking about summer, and she got jealous. And she picked up my, 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 my gazebos and all and, and piled them all by my door, where my window was, by my pool. And she didn't throw anything through the window. She just piled it all up on everything. And I came up there, and she said, don't talk about that other woman. Because I was describing to a friend of mine the color of Summer's hair. Because I, I told him the color of fall hair. And the person asked me, well, what is the color of Summer? And I had never seen Summer. And when she asked me that, all of a sudden, Summer appeared while I was in the woods. And she said, this is the color of my hair. And why did I say that? Because fall was listening, and she didn't like that. So they do get jealous. But moving right along, they do get jealous. They have homes. Uh, uh, Psalms 107, verse 25. How much time I got? Oh, boy, I got to do this in five minutes. It's going to be a miracle. Verse 25. I can do it. All things is possible. I'm going to make time. I'm one of my... Parents, Ooh. <laughs> I love this stuff, you know. <laughs> Ooh. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. And so these hurricanes, he command them to come out of their chamber. If, if you ever get a chance, go listen to my thing on the hurricanes and what happened with Puerto Rico. And you'll get an idea. I don't want to digress. Look in Ecclesiastes. No, we already saw that. So Ecclesiastes 11, verse 5. And so I'm, I'm trying to help you to see that all creation is moaning and groaning, waiting for us, y'all. As you do not know what is the way of the wind. So you don't know the way of the wind. You don't know, you don't know the path that they on. You can't see the street. But they're out there. Go ahead. Or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child. So you do not know the works of God who makes everything. So you can't understand these things because I have not seen. Ear has not heard. Ear has not heard it because God says in the next verse, right in the next verse, he says, but he has shown it to us by his spirit. And so I want to share the, some of the things I saw and some of the things that the prophet saw. I'm reading the word. Look in, look in Psalms 148 verse 8 again. And I want you to hear this in closing. So I'm getting ready to close. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. So all of these things that are in their home, they fulfill his words. And listen to me, and the words of the prophet. So people will say, what do you mean you're going to call for a storm? I, I have no choice. Why? I was born to call it. So I'm born at a time where... It will obey my voice. Lightning and hell, snow and wind, fulfilling his word. If I be a man of God, Elijah said, let fire come out of his chamber. And 50 men died. Why did those 50 men die? Because Elijah was born at a time like that where he would tell them and they will obey his word. And let me throw this in real quick for you all. Look in the book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 23. I said I was going to close with that last verse, but all of a sudden, bam, 
I was hit with revelation. <laughs> and Moses stretched out his rod so toward Moses heaven. So Moses stretched out his rod, another man of God, another mighty man with prophet, and what happened? And the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire darted to the ground. And the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. And so what happens when the prophets called on and the entities? The book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. Who do you make yourself? I don't make myself anything. God made me. <laughs> and it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. Because I'm going to call for judgment. I just happen to know that entity's name, and I know that it's bigger and stronger than any entity I've seen in my lifetime. It would be stronger than the Andrew. It would be stronger than all of those other names that they gave to the storms. This one would be the mother of all storms. Con continue. There were more who died from the hailstones. They were like in the trees. There was more that died from the trees. There was more that died from the hailstones. Continue. Than the children of Israel killed with the sword. Wow. Continue. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still. So notice Gideon. he talks because prophets know that these are entities. So he decided that day to talk to the son. Go ahead. Stand still over Gibeon. He said, stop moving, because it's like a strong man running in a race to come out of his chamber. He was running his race. And Joshua said, stop! And he looked over at the moon. And moon in the valley of Ajalon. He looked at her, because one is a male, the other is a female. So he said to the male, stop! And he looked over to the female, you too! And what happened? So the sun stood still. So the sun stood still. Go ahead. And the moon stopped. And the moon stopped. Wow. All creation. Sun. So David wrote, The sun will not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I will lift up the, my eyes beyond the hill from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I know the entity. The sun won't smite me by day. <laughs> Nor the moon at night. Why? Because they are waiting for the sons and the daughters of God. I'm not worrying about lightning hitting me when I'm walking on the field. Why? I did that continuously as a child. Because one day they told me I was the son of thunder. So why would I be afraid of lightning? <laughs> Woo! Oh. Psalms, I mean, Psalms 37, 11 to 14, and I'm closing. I hope y'all got a lot to chew on. Remember, you can always back this video up and listen to it again and read the verses and see it through spiritual eyes. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Job 37, 11 to 14. I knew it was something wrong. I said to myself, that's not in my head. <laughs> ah, Job 37, 11 to 14. And we close in here, y'all. Also with moisture, he saturates the thick clouds. So he saturates the thick clouds. He makes all of the moisture go back into his house. Go ahead. He scatters his bright clouds. And, they and, then, he, and then he commands them with their moisture, go over here. So he's commanding the clouds because all of the moisture went back into their house. Just like the wind, the hurricanes go back into their chambers. He says to the moisture or the rain to come out of the chamber or come out of their house, go back in. So the clouds open its doors and the, it goes in. It fills up. Then he scatters them. He tells the clouds where to go. For what reason? Go ahead. And they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the Because he's going to tell them where to drop their water. Go ahead. On the face of the whole earth, he causes it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. 
Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and Stand consider. Stand still. So these men of God are talking to Job because they have they had experienced. These are the sons of 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 of, of Esau, the sons of of Jacob. These are the sons of Ishmael. Their father was Abraham and Isaac and all of these. And so they had knowledge of the things because their fathers and their grandfathers walk and talk with the entities. You don't see much of that. There are not many people like me that can talk to the wind and it obey you. What kind of man is this that the wind and the waves obey? There's not many people that can talk to the sun and the sun obey them. The Lord said this, you know what? We can't have people stopping the sun and the moon. So he says, I'm not going to let anybody do what Joshua did. But the prophet came and said, okay, the Lord, you didn't say I come to make the sun walk backwards. So he told the sun to walk backwards 15 degrees. <laughs> and for 15 minutes, the sun went back and then came back forward. <laughs> so awesome that the kings of the earth in that day sent uh, emissaries all over the world asking who God made the sun walk backwards. And they found out it was in Israel. And so they put gifts and all. Why? Man, you got an awesome God when you make the sun obey your voice. So what manner of man is this? That the, the, that the wind and the waves obey them. I'm telling you, children of God, why don't you speak to nature? Speak to the wind. Speak to the moon. Speak to the stars. As David said in 148, praise him, all you heavens. Praise him, you heights above the heaven. Praise him, sun and moon and stars. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, hell, snow. Praise him, because all creation one day will praise him. And to him that is able to keep you from falling, the one that will present you faultless before the throne of grace, the only wise God, our Savior, the majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. <laughs>